My name is Janet Olisa, Nigeria High Commissioner to Jamaica and Belize, and Ambassador to Haiti and Dominican Republic, and the Permanent Representative to the International Seabed Authority. What was it like when you came to Jamaica the first time? I was surprised uh, because the topography took me aback. I was expecting uh, something very, you know, like an island in the middle of all the <laughs> water surrounding. But what I saw was a lot of flat land in some areas, but quite a lot of hills around. And of course, the high commission's uh, high commissioner's residence is just on that Jack's Hill. So at the end of the day, you just find that you have hills all over, beautiful hills, you know, looking out, uh, having a good view of the harbor. But at the end of the day, what it gave me was the idea that I wasn't far from home because at the end of the day, the topography was so similar to what I was used to. There was no adjusting. I just blended into the whole place and uh, the only, the only thing that was a bit um, strange at first to most people was seeing me dressed in my Nigerian attire. But um, Jamaicans quickly caught up to, <laughs> to that. And uh, when I meet the Rastafarians, it's like, oh, princess, African queen. And there I go, I blush, if a black man can blush. <laughs> and, so I and of course, it's... Um, Difficult to know that I'm not Jamaican just by looking at me until I say something and then, oh, your accent is uh, unique. Where are you from? Of course, immediately they know I'm from somewhere in Africa and then the conversation will now start. So it has been quite interesting and uh, very, uh, how do I say it, eye-opening uh, for me. I just fitted in. What I enjoyed most being uh, the High Commissioner to Jamaica is the fact that um, I got to know Jamaicans. I was able to travel around most of the parishes. I missed out one. And I was also able to meet uh, the people. You know, what I always find, I won't say fascinating, but interesting is that we've read the history of our ancestors being taken away. Now I'm here witnessing the history of where my ancestors went to and what became of them and what became of their offsprings. My cousins, my nieces, my great, 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 great grand, you know, whatever. So it's a very interesting time for me to have this part of my history because Jamaica's history is also my history. It's the history of where my ancestors went to. And so for me, that was another uh, uh, very positive aspect. Then, of course, I would say that, that I must repeat every time. I will miss the rum. I enjoy the rum. <laughs> I enjoy the rum. And I, and I have the weight to show for the rum. <laughs> In my eyes, um, the, the works I've done, I would want to start with a cultural exchange, uh, showcasing Nigerian culture, why? Because I wanted Jamaicans, especially the young ones, the youth, to see their heritage, where they came from. These ancestors, what were they before they were brought out of the, uh, the African continent, especially from Nigeria? What could we offer? And at the end of the day, seeing how excited the young ones. I participated at the Sevi Heritage every year from 2017 to 2019. I'm missing this year's zone because of the COVID, and also uh, at going to the different schools. So I would say that was one major achievement. Now I can proudly leave this country and know that Nigeria is a household name. I get people come to the gate of the Nigeria High Commission and just stand in front of the word Nigeria and take a photograph. And that for me, it's really, it's, it's really an identity being accepted as part of uh, the Jamaican culture and people. Secondly, is my work with JBDC. Um, in 2017, we, we brought in uh, two artisans under the Technical Aid Corps program to assist the young entrepreneurial in uh, creating authentic Jamaican art. Not that Jamaica doesn't have its own art, but we're bringing in some of the lost art that Jamaicans had lost over the years 
For example, the tie and dye, the metal, the metal work, and the bead work, and all that, how it is done back in Nigeria. So with the tie and dye, the, the young uh, entrepreneurs have been able to put things together, design it in the Jamaican style, with the Jamaican colors. So at the end of the day, when the tourists come in, they are buying authentic Jamaican products. And that for me was another uh, high point. And of course, like I said, working with the children and the third aspect will be working with the young mothers, the YWC. I had quite a number of uh, mentoring programs with them. I gingered them up to, to think about their future, letting them know that the world hasn't come to an end because they just had a baby. And again, I also learned a couple of things that I am going to take home and try to see how we can emulate some of the, the system uh, uh, that the Jamaican government has put in place for such young uh, mothers. Well, I think my fondest memory, uh, it will be meeting the icons, meeting the people that we've read about or going to the places where they were born, like going to the Bob Marley Museum, the Peter Church Museum, meeting uh, with awesome boards, meeting with the legend, the Jamaican legend. I think um, when I go back and, and people will talk, Janet, what did, did you see this person? Did you talk to uh, Tootsie Bird? May so rest in peace. We had, you know, all this connection, I think, the people. And to be able to go down to the countryside, St. Elizabeth, Black River, I went a couple of times. I think I've become an honorary member of uh, St. Elizabeth, <laughs> from the mayor to the MP. It's been fun for me. And those, I think, is having the people, meeting them, being invited, and of course, not forgetting the food. Manish water, uh, aki and salt fish. Very, I never saw Aki in my life until I came here. And seeing some of the things that um, we take for granted back home, like breadfruit. And my mother came for a couple of months and she was surprised, like, oh, breadfruit. I, she's not had breadfruit in years. And I had no idea what breadfruit was until I came to Jamaica. Apparently, we used to have red breadfruit. Maybe we still do, but I think development, cutting down of trees, we've lost so much. Of, of, of that. So at the end of the day, uh, the people, the food, the music, uh, attending the festival, wow, that, that's it. And again, Jack Pork, oh good. I think I have one of the best uh, residents in Jamaica because most of the major fruits from apple, aki, mango, two species of mangoes all over, so but all breadfruit. Avocado, coconut, I had fun. What's next for me is back to Abuja, which is our usual practice where we serve, we go back to our base. And uh, from there, we know what's next. I honestly have no clue. It could be being a director in a department or I could be sent to another agency. But I will wait until I step foot in Abuja to determine what's next for me. I am definitely coming back to visit Jamaica and uh, for everyone's information there's going to be uh, a flight, direct flight for the first time in history from Lagos to Montego Bay in December and in January. The success of those flights will determine how regular the flight is but irrespective of the flight I am definitely coming back. Jamaica has become a second home, I've made a lot of friends. And like I said, um, going all over the last parish I wasn't able to, to get to, I will get to it when Which I come parish on, is that? on uh, Westmoreland. <laughs> I know, I wasn't able to get there. I will definitely on holiday this time with all the free time. Oh, but we went a lot, but some of them are not for the. <laughs> but I, I know Wagwan, uh, Leko Leko. Uh, what else is good for the viewers? <laughs> I have learned quite a number of things, and uh, and what I really enjoy is when in, when I'm you know reading the, the the newspaper, I see the way the patwa is put in there as part of the reading. But yes, I have I've learned a couple. I I do more of listening than speaking. <laughs> <laughs>